Nicole, I waited in line eight hours for this drop. I'm putting it all up on GOAT.com tomorrow. Hypebeast are going to buy for triple resale value. What are you talking about? Cookies. Crumble cookies. This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. And when we're not internet chefing over on the Mythical Kitchen and Good Mythical Morning channels, we are right freaking here taking on the world's biggest food debates. Nicole, we got a doozy today. We got, this is the- I'm su- so excited. <laughs> this is the Supreme. This is the, what, give me, Odd, Odd Future was a streetwear brand. The uh, hun- golf, the, golf. Golf. Golf was a streetwear brand. Golf, golf Wang. Rip and Dip. Rip and dip? Rip and dip had the little kitty that would flick you off when you would pull down the, the shirt. I'm still stuck on bathing ape. Do people bape still wear cool. bape? Bape was cool. Bape, bape is still cool. They had the hoodies that you zipped all the way up yeah, and it but, made like a new thing. But bape is now on Melrose. It's not on Fairfax anymore. I have no idea what they we're talking up. about except for crumble cookies. These are the hottest cookies in the game right now. So hot. <laughs> been building. <laughs> that Hansel is so hot right now. They've been building their base for the last like five years. Five years, yeah. And then when they finally dropped their app, it was literally like one of the top five most downloaded it's apps insane. in the entire app store. And I have never had a single taste of a crumble cookie. Wow. I've had one. One bite. Pr- what what is bite. your, what, were you jaded about it? Mm. Did you want it to be deliberately iconoclastic and be like, crumble cookie suck, or were you open to it? No, I'm I'm always open. I'll try anything once. So <laughs> <laughs> crumble cookies, you know, they're good. They're sweet. They're, their texture, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. Their texture is, is something that you need to experience in order to decide if you like it or not. Okay, so that has been the criticism against crumble yeah. cookies. There's a lot of people, of course, anything becomes so big that people just want to tear it down. Naturally. They want to milkshake duck the cookies. Yeah, can you explain milkshake duck? Because Josh tells me about milkshake ducking once a week at this point. I am so on Monday mornings. He's like, "Well, time to get milkshake ducked." <laughs> and I'm like, I am okay. so toxically online. It was one yeah. tweet that said, uh, "The world is in love with milkshake duck, the adorable duck that drinks milkshakes." Ten hours later, we regret to inform you that milkshake duck is racist. Yeah, um, which is just a metaphor for how the internet takes one person and they build them up, prop them up, just to tear them down. Um, yeah. The guy, well, his name was like Sly Dog Four Twenty. Oh yeah, cram- so cranberry juice, juice skateboard TikTok guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone loved that guy. Turned out he said the N word a bunch. <laughs> People didn't like that, <laughs> yeah, you know. But um, rightfully so. <laughs> so that's yeah. another great case yeah. of milkshake ducking. Yes, you know, yes, rightfully yes. so. Uh, but crumble cookies. People raise them up just to tear them down. It's They're still incredibly popular. I want to try them. And also, if we're talking about cultural reasons why they might be sweet, right? Like, okay, for instance, mm-hmm. you go to a Japanese izakaya, you eat something like natto. Yes. Right? That's a texture that is not very familiar. Totally. Natto is fermented soybeans that is very kind of stringy, stringy has a bit of slimy. a uh, slimy texture to it. Sure. But not a texture familiar to Americans, um, but very familiar to Japanese people. Sure. So it can be challenging. Crumble cookies are incredibly sweet, apparently. I've never had one. Because they're incredibly American? Because they're incredibly Mormon. Incredibly Mormon. Here's the thing. Here's the oh, thing. Oh, are they Mormons? They are more. So they were founded by Mormons. They were founded by two Mormon cousins in Utah. I know they were founded by cousins. I just didn't know they were Mormon. But I should have assumed if they were cousins and they were in Utah, they're probably Mormons. Listen, it's just a numbers <laughs> game at that point. Um, but and I grew up around a lot of Mormons. Um, I believe they tend to have a sweet tooth. Is that true? Because they cannot drink caffeine. They do not drink alcohol. And so I think the vice sort of becomes sugar. Sugar is their a, drug of this, choice. This is a gross oversimplification of Mormon food culture. Huh. However, are you familiar with like the soda jerk culture in, in uh, Utah? Um, yeah, how they have these like little huts and they make like cool drinks. Like, yeah. Like really cool. Like, like oh, let's put like four pumps of this and you, like half yeah, a spoon of this. You yeah. customize all the sodas. You're adding blue syrups, toppings, all this type of stuff. Yeah. And it's because it's that's what their bar is, right? Like they that's can't so go crazy. out and get grab a pint. They yeah. make a weird soda. So I believe crumble cookies, the sweet tooth, has something to do wow. with Mormon hyperfixation on sweets. Wow. And Americans are very Mormon. I, right? I mean, Utahans are very Mormon. Yeah. Also, I, I grew up with around a lot of Pacific Islander uh, Mormon people. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, because they did a lot of missionary work there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of diverse Mormons out there. Anyway, okay. shout out to the Mormons. Y'all are great at playing instruments. I don't know what it is, if that has anything to do with the scripture. Every Mormon I've ever known, just like, they can bust out a clarinet and just play a song. Wow, um, really? Yeah, dude. I guess they really, like, exemplify, like, they really find importance in, like, learning a, a skill, like an instrument. Shout out to the Smith family that I grew up with. Um, anyways, we got to dig into you the cookies. We got we to gotta jump in. Okay. We got to make our official designation of 
Are crumble cookies overrated or not? So in front Shut of the us, laptop. we have a, a party box. <laughs> Typically, they come out with four cookies, and then there's a mystery cookie. But we, Whoa. because we're fancy, fancy people, we got a big old box. Holy smokes, Josh. look at these cookies. <laughs> Are you going to cut the box off? Maggie gave me scissors to cut the box that's off, smart, but smart. I'm left-handed, so this is really awkward for me, and I'm probably going to break my wrist. But to get into the box thing, the box is one of the... To get into the box thing, the box is one of the reasons why Crumble became really popular because oh they gosh. got the packaging right. Yeah, it's like the Chipotle bag. They put the sort of graffiti looking stuff on it. It's all hypey hype. What the hell are these, Nicole? What the hell is going on with these cookies? I can't wait to go to someone's graduation and hold this up instead of a picture of their face. For those of you listening only, not watching the YouTube video, we're on YouTube now. If you didn't know that, yeah, you should watch um, us on YouTube. Our faces are gorgeous. These are not cookies. These are cookies that fell into a Chernobyl you know, radioactive waste vat. <laughs> they look beautiful. They, they're beautiful. And then like beautiful. came out and were branded yeah. by Jojo Siwa. Yeah. Like, they're... I, I don't know how to describe it. They're, they're these, they're the hyper pop of cookies. They're covered in sprinkles. They're each, I mean, not to get into the calorie count. These each have to be like 800 calories, right? You know, on the website, there's a one, it's 150 calories with a little asterisk on the side. Yeah, it says. Which is why, Josh, please reach for the crumble cookie cutter. What the hell are you talking about? The co- the what is a crumble cookie cutter? Josh, right next to the box, bro. What yeah. the hell is this? Okay, so okay, th- so there is like this is like the pizza. You know the little pizza table? Yes. The little white plastic pizza yes. table. Yes. This is a giant. Each cookie is four servings. That's not this. This they know what product, they're doing. I am currently holding the crumble cookie cutter, and let me tell you, crumble cookies might be overrated, but this. <laughs> is incredible. This is a piece of technology that I'm glad to have in my hands. It's like holding on to, I don't know, the first piece of sliced bread or something. It's It's just a piece of plastic with a cross in it, which one symbol of the Mormon faith. Jesus! And then two (laughs) just cuts the cookie into four pieces. No, but the cross needs to be like higher, right? The quadrants are too equal. Yeah, I don't know if the Mormon cross is different than like the the Protestant cross Mm. because like the Orthodox cross is different. Oh, is it? It's the swirly one? Yeah, I think, right? The Orthodox cross is a swirly one? Or am I thinking of the prince prince's uh, logo name? <laughs> You're thinking... Yeah, the Orthodox cross has got like serifs on it. Oh, the one with the, the slant on the yeah, bottom? Oh, that's so cool. What's the, re- what's the reasoning for the bottom one? I don't know. It's okay. Uh, this isn't I know a... nothing about Orthodoxy outside this of Tom isn't, Hanks. This isn't a thing about... This isn't a podcast about religion, is it? It should be. We should host a religious podcast. <laughs> okay. I know so much about Judaism. Okay, so um, actually, I need to pull up my laptop again because I have all the flavors written down so we know what we're eating. I know more about Mormonism than Judaism. That's, That's embarrassing. Sad. That's sad. I, try- I should just convert. I don't want to give up any of the things that I love doing, though. I'm buying you a mezuzah tomorrow. I don't want to tithe I to cannot the let you talk like this. I don't want to tithe I to cannot let you speak like this. Did you just tithe? Tithe? Tithe. You give 10% of your income. That's the thing that a lot of it's Christians do. It's called sadaka. Do. We do sadaka. You do sudoku? No, we do sadaka. Is it 10%? It's more. Do you I'm give? Sure it's really? More. I give a, I give a lot. I do a lot of charity. To whom? This is my charity. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Uh, um, no, but I do give a lot of charity because I think it's important to give back to communities. Okay, yeah, we Julie have... and I are going to start uh, volunteering at a food bank on Sunday, a Jewish food bank on Sundays to do sudoku. Or are you for real? Tikkun olam, brother. Tikkun olam, brother. Tikkun olam and matata. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the cookies we have. Milk chocolate chip. <laughs> That's the OG. This is what launched it. Milk chocolate chip. So they said they set out to... Do I cut it? Do I have to use no, the cookie me, cutter? No, let me talk through all of the okay. flavors, sir. Okay, okay, Honey cake featuring Teddy Grahams, branded. <laughs> a tasty graham-flavored cookie decorated with honey butter frosting, a light juice of honey, and Teddy Grahams. You put butter under cookies. <laughs> There's butter into cookies, there's butter on to cookies. <laughs> chocolate chocolate mallow cupcake, a delicious cake, chocolate cake cookie topped with a layer of fluffy marshmallow whipped cream, gooey chocolate glaze, and decorative white loops. Oh boy. Peanut butter sneak peanut butter featuring Snickers, <laughs> also branded. Oh. A chunky peanut butter cookie topped with caramel that's buttercream, a, a sprinkle of delicious that's Snickers a big pieces, boy. and a smooth milk chocolate drizzle. Classic pink sugar, an all-time favorite, a vanilla sugar cookie to- topped with a perfect pink swoop of real almond frosting. Now what is almond cookie. frosting? Dude, I have no idea. Oh. And, then, and then KG said that the mystery cookie is cake batter blondie. Cake batter blonde. Listen, well, okay, 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 okay. Let's throw this out there. This is a cookie 
Yeah. That is flavored like cake batter. Cake yes. is another pastry. Yeah. But it's a blondie. Dude, yes. That's three different nouns in one. Of there should only be one noun. The a rest should be adjectives. I agree. A cookie should be a cookie should be a cookie. But like there's there's way too much crossover happening right now. And it's kind of giving me whiplash. It's giving me cookie whiplash. Lee, I love that movie. <laughs> Are you rushing or are you dragging? I've never seen it. You talk about it all Dude, the time. Dude, we should watch Whiplash. It'll give you so much anxiety. Oh we? my god. Okay, you want to have a Let's movie, have a movie day? Night. Let's have a movie <gasps> Can we get any of these cookies? Okay, the yeah. chocolate chip cookie. This you want to start is chip? it looks thick and it looks underbaked, which is what a lot of people like in cookies. Um, ooh, but that's got a good crunch when you cut into that, Nicole. So they said that they set out to just perfect a chocolate chip cookie recipe, and that's what launched Crumble back in like 2017 or whatever. Can I tell you why it's already imperfect? Go ahead. Milk chocolate. You prefer a dark or semi-sweet chocolate it's in your cookie. It's necessary for a chocolate But, cookie. Nicole, imagine that you have lived a life devoid of alcohol and pleasure, and you need the sweet. Can't imagine Just to it. feel something. Try it. Try the cookie. This is what well, I'm analyzing it. It is underbaked. This is raw cookie dough at the bottom, which, yeah. again, I love raw cookie dough. Yeah, this so milk this chocolate is, chip. So this is the original mm-hmm. chocolate chip. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a milk chocolate chip. It does have the consistency of a blondie, which... A blondie is a brownie without chocolate, for those who don't know. That's right. And it is one of my favorite pastries because totally. I'm not a chocolate guy and I love the texture of a dense Fair. brownie. I think it's delicious. Hot damn, it tastes the Mormonism. It tastes like Elohim is giving me my own planet. It tastes like Joseph Smith reading the scrolls. It tastes like Brigham Young leading the expedition through Missouri. I know about Brigham Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a university named after him. <laughs> Tastes like Steve Young, direct descendant of Brigham Young, winning the Rose Bowl for BYU in 1984. I don't think he did that, but Steve Young, shout out. What's Mormon, the mascot? Mormon quarterback. What's the mascot of BYU? Tastes like the Detmer brothers, other Mormon quarterbacks. What's the- There's so many Mormon quarterbacks. Zach Wilson, terrible quarterback. Great Mormon. Um, the I, Cougars. They're Cougars. BYU. I don't love this cookie. They're oh, the Cougars, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I don't I love this cookie. Do you love this cookie? It's okay. It doesn't do it for me 100%. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Which is why they have this quadrant cutter, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> Capitalism. But even the flavor, works it's like. <laughs> is there brown butter in there? For sure. There's brown butter in there. Mm-hmm. It's a well-made cookie. To me, it is simply. It is too thick. It is too underbaked. Underbaked. To be a cookie. If you reframe this as a blondie, if you bake this in a sheet pan, and cut it into squares, it would be. It would be golden. I think it would be more successful. But I don't think that a brownie delivery service or Correct. whatever you want or a brownie drop doesn't have the same. I don't know, genus say qua as say a cookie drop does. You are absolutely correct. Yeah. Like they literally, these should none of these should be cookies. They're not, but we can't judge too soon. We can't. No, we can't. We soon. can't. But I'm, I'm trying to like get in yeah. the head of crumble and figure it out because like it's objectively, it's it's sweet as hell. It's, it's a great like dessert. objectively delicious. Yeah, it's a good dessert. I just don't know if it's a good cookie. I agree. I agree. What do you want to move on to, to next? Where do you want to go? Should we stick with chocolate? Let's go with peanut butter. Let's peanut go with this butter? peanut butter Snickers monster. It's got just a turd coil of frosting on top. <laughs> How do you feel about frosting on cookies? It's weird, right? Loft house cookies? Is that what they're called? Yeah. That's the only exception, though. So loft house cookies, for people who don't know, um, they had a stranglehold on kids' birthday parties in classrooms in the early 2000s. Yeah. They're like the blandest. It's like a communion wafer of shortbread. I don't think they're bland. I think it's either it's a texture thing. Either you love them or you hate them. It's like a very like dry, cakey thing, but there's almost no sweetness yeah. in the actual cookie part. And then there's just a dollop of thick pink frosting like and sprinkles. fluorescent pink frosting. Yeah. And I love the cookies. I like them because when they mix with your saliva, they kind of go up in your gut region <laughs> and you can just keep it there for later. Okay, what's going on with this one? This is a Snickers Sniff it. peanut butter. It's a it, peanut butter cookie. It's their peanut butter cookie with Snickers. But what is the frosting? There's normally, okay, so it's a <laughs> peanut butter based cookie. <laughs> you have chocolate on your nose. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. So it's a peanut butter cookie. There's just a layer of frosting, chopped up Snickers bars, caramel and then frosting. chocolate goo. It's a caramel frosting? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, this one's good. I have a soft spot for peanut butter cookies. Oh. Oh, God, that's good. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Let me just tell you what it does. I don't like the caramel, the artificial caramel taste. Next, you want to kind of vomit. No, I love it. But the cookie and the and the pieces on top and the drizzle, I'm all about. Mormon Jesus, take me to your planet. Josh, I can't I accept you... the fact that you came to the Americas and proselytized to the natives. <laughs> God. That's a thing. That's oh my, awful. dude, this is. That's good. As somebody who loves hyper aggressive flavors, that was really aggressive. Like I love, like um, one of my favorite foods. This is a weird tangent. It's like um, Lao style papaya salad. Yes, you've told me this before. Because it's like fermented mud crabs pounded with the world's <laughs> spiciest chilies. 
and just a ton of fish sauce and crunchy green papaya, Mm -hmm. whole chunks of ginger. And it is just, to me, like the most intensely flavored food in the world. This is like the dessert version of that. There is no restraint. Zero. This is balls to the wall, rubbing is racing, cold trickle, days of thunder ass cookie coming straight to your freaking dome. Do you say rubbing is rubbing is racing, racing. Nicole? What is rub? What is rubbing is racing? If I'm going 170 miles an hour in a NASCAR and you come up next to me, I'm gonna jam right into you. You know why? Because rubbing is racing. My name's Cold Trickle. Oh, the cars are rubbing against each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, I guess. I yeah, without that context, it sounds sensual. I was like you were gonna go down a weird Mormon like thing, and I just wasn't no, interested. No, that's soaking. Yeah, I wasn't. And interested. soaking is not sex. <laughs> I think kids listen to this. Podcast. <laughs> I think. Listen, is this a, this is a historical fact that we're talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, this immediately swayed me. I'm never gonna go to Crumble and get a normal chocolate chip cookie. No, their normal chocolate chip is is mid, as the kids say, it's mid. My throat burns from the amount of sugar. That's my problem. I, I don't care. I can't eat things like that. Why was there a point when you could when you were a child? Yeah, of course. When I was a kid, I was like nom nom nom. But like I now it's like, yeah, see, don't no, you want to have more cookies? Do you have a, ca- a palate cleanser in there? What's in there today? I need milk. I need milk and sparkling I, water. And I, I want to combine them. I was counting down the minutes until you said you needed milk. Oh god. I was waiting for you to say I just should put down a jug of milk in front of you. I have a nice little um I have a nice little flat white with oat milk. I ate a cookie and I saw God. All right, freak. Let's move on to the I'm next ready. one. I'm ready. What are we doing? I want this one. No. I, I say we stick with chocolate. No, we want a palate no. cleanser before chocolate. <laughs> Let's do this one. This is going to be the sweetest. Do you, <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the uh, classic iced sugar cookie. Yeah. This is going to be the sweetest. The cookie is literally made of sugar, and then they put a sugar goo on top. Oh, look. It kind of looks like the cutter itself as well. It's beautiful. It's pink. It's understated. It you cuts know, the cleanest out of all of them. It cuts the cleanest. It is hard. It is dense. This thing weighs. You ever pick up a, a, a wedge of tungsten? <laughs> Not recently. Does anybody Josh. know what I'm talking about? Tungsten, tungsten is heavy. Heavy. I do know that. Heavy. Look small. Pick it up. Heavy. The inside is tungsten just... ass cookie. <laughs> the inside is just is just dough. They used an anti leavening agent, Nicole. They used a <laughs> densifying agent in this cookie. There is no rise. I g- okay. God <laughs> damn! I need to spit this out. I'm gonna swallow it. <laughs> I don't want it. I hate this so much. It is like eating pure fondant. So almondy. Oh my god, it literally just tastes like you're eating a thing of marzipan. It tastes like a spoonful of marzipan. God. Which Man, is I love good for some people. <laughs> cookie ex- exploded out of my mouth and I ate it again. Um I love almond extract too. I, I I think almond extract and pastries is one of my favorites. I almost prefer it to vanilla sometimes. That is so much. That's too much. This is like the beef Ooh. bouillon of cookies. Ooh. It's like a cookie concentrate. I I think, are you not supposed to soak this in water? <laughs> like you soak it in water, it hydrates to be a full cake, and then the flavors disperse? You mean like the, the boyfriends, the little like a build of boyfriends that you would get from Oz? What? <laughs> you know, whenever you would buy a little, it was like, build a boyfriend, or like build a girlfriend, and it was like a little like, like, um... <laughs> I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. No. It's like, it was like a toy that you would get from Oz. You know Oz, the store Oz? No. Do you know the store Oz? Oh my gosh, it was like- Is this an LA thing? No, look up A-A-H-S. Oz. Oz, yeah, sorry, there's a lot of ways to spell Oz. A-A-H-S exclamation point. And it was like a weird, like, like kitschy store. They had a lot of, I don't know, like Halloween costumes in like June or whatever. And they had these things that's like build your own boyfriend when you would like, it was like made out of sponge material and it was like the size of your thumb and then it would like expand in water. <laughs> and it, really? would, and it would like be like kind of like the size of like your palm. It's like, oh, build a boyfriend. Did you love him? <laughs> <laughs> Did he validate you if like you David? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Those are like fun little toys. But that's what you're talking about, right? Reconstituting it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the first time I've drank a full glass of water on this podcast because... Each cookie, I can feel the cavity is forming. It's disgusting. And again, I have such a high tolerance for like very, very sweet things, but apparently not Mormon tolerance. You know, like uh, Thai spicy. Yeah, Thai spicy Mormon tolerance. Mormon yeah, sugar. like you can get it like like mild, medium, hot, or Thai spicy at a Thai yeah. restaurant. You can literally get it Mormon sweet, and this is Mormon sweet. 
That is heavy, man. Do you want to keep going? Yes, we have to keep oh going my God. for science. If you do not forge ahead, Nicole, I will. It's okay. I'll like be your John co- Muir entering the wilderness with nothing but a notebook. I'll be your uh, co-pilot. Cut, on cut me up. Cut me up. I want to taste the chocolate because I want to end with the the other one. But it's going to make the cookie cutter messy. Don't go to the chocolate. Okay, go to this one. Then I can't we'll just reach that far. You have to God, do it. it. Then we'll start slopping around in all the frosting. Oh ones. my god, I think this one might be filled. Oh god, it's so hard. <laughs> this one might be filled. Yeah, this one's stuffed. This one's pregnant. You ever see like a fish and it's just a little too fat and you're like, that fish got baby eggs in it? <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh my god, it's just like a pad of white chocolate in the middle. What's this going is, on? This is the cake batter one. This is the cake oh batter god. bundle. Cake <laughs> batter bundle. Cheers. Cake batter bundle. <laughs> <laughs> None of the cookie dough is cut. It's so raw. <laughs> Oh, oh God, this is so good. <laughs> it's so soft and raw. Oh, what's the flavor? Cake batter blondie. Oh, there's like a raspberry going on. There's like an artificial raspberry. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I think it's the sprinkles. God, that's good. Yeah, it's like cake batter and raspberry, strawberry. Oh. <laughs> Please contain yourself, sir. This I is can't. a family friendly <laughs> so podcast. Sorry. I love how we got two of each. I know. To be like, well, there's two podcast hosts. <laughs> They'll each want to eat a cookie. <laughs> I told, We're eating a quarter of a quarter. I told KG. I told KG to get us a nice, pretty box. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. the Heimlich! We need to administer the Heimlich. Well, I finally met my match in a food, and it is crumble cookies. Oh my gosh, Josh, um, that was horrible. Subway has a raspberry white chocolate yeah. cookie. Does it taste like that times like on steroids? Literally. Yeah. Literally. It is like you threw Subway's raspberry white chocolate cookies into a black hole and it like condensed it into dark matter. Yeah. And then it, you know, uh, went through Provo, Utah and ended up here. Yeah. Also had like 100 grams of steroids pumped into its bottom. A hundred percent, man. And I yeah. am in like... I think this genuinely tastes good, though. I think the texture is good. Mm-mm. I love blondie texture. Again, it is sweet as hell. Um, that one's working for me. I need an adult. <laughs> I don't know how much. I never thought I'd be the person who's like, that's too sweet. I can't handle it. It's like, no. It's people sweet. say that about Indian sweets, right? And I love Indian sweets. They think they're too sweet? Yeah. And like, they're they're very, very is sugar laden. Because they're so honey heavy? Maybe the honey. It's not even honey. It's like jaggery. It's just they're very. Okay. Dense and it's dense. a lot of nut paste, you know, mixed with stuff. Sure. Um, and it's not meant to be eaten in this quantity, is the thing about Indian sweets, especially. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, think about like jalebi, right? Or yeah. zulbia. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's incredibly sweet, but you eat, it's a, a little, little nush. Pieces, yeah. It's a little nush. You need the whole thing, yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Different. <laughs> Different portions. America. This is the most American thing I've ever seen. Slice up the honey grapes. There's a Mormon one. Mexican chain called Cafe Rio. Okay. It came into my hometown. Mm-hmm. Same thing, but same thing, but burritos. They were just the biggest, wettest, mostest burritos I've ever had. Mostest burritos. Man. God, cut, I love cut it. Cut it open. Cut it what, open. What are the other ones? This is the honey the honey bear one. God. The honey butter it's a bear. Butter, it's, uh, it's honey butter frosting. Oh, my gosh. All right. We're cutting into the Josh, golden. Josh, this is horrific. Oh, God. Golden Graham's honey butter frosted honey crumble, <laughs> crumble cooking. I want the one with the bear on it. Just, just take another bear. No. No, God, no, no, I hate no, just, no, no. God, Thank just you. let me live. Oh, this cookie feels wet. <laughs> why is it? This is the heaviest cookie. Oh, why is it? It's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's, is, it's, no. like, it's like holding a two pound weight. No. This is like a two pound. This is two pounds of cookie. It's like pure plutonium. <laughs> oh my God, it's wet. <laughs> it's wet and it's heavy. You poke it and stay wet. Look it. <laughs> How does your finger poke like that? I can poke all the way through if I wanted to. Oh my okay, gosh, you I have mean, a hard finger. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just eating butter. This is good. It was actually balanced. Ethith- ethicists. <laughs> ethicists need to study this food. For whether or not <laughs> I understand this is like think. suitable for human consumption. This is the most balanced cookie we've had, though. It's good. Salt. It's salty. This is a well-balanced cookie. Good job, Crumble. These are the just the Indian sweets of cookies, dude. If these were like little tiny, if there was a single bite, like a single very sweet thing to end a meal. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't be Instagrammable if it wasn't. Correct. They need to play to American excess and boy, have they. This is, this is just butter. Like this is butter. This is like a whipped honey butter. 
That is a really good cookie. Or it's like buttercream is just whipped butter with, you know, that's sugar any frosting. It. Yeah, this is just a lower sugar cookie so the butter can really shine and then they just drizzle honey on it. And it's salted, which makes it great. Which makes... Unreal. This is the perf- This is the best cookie that out of the ones that we've tried 100%. so far. Because it's salted. And it's not like a, you're not getting punched in the gut with Ugh. just sugar. Incredibly balanced. Well done, Crumble. Damn, I am... This has been the biggest emotional journey of any food tasting that we've ever done. Ethicists. Ethicists. And we still have... One more. We still have the marshmallow oh cupcake. Oh my God, Josh. Dark chocolate. Nicole. Oh, I have sh- I have, I'm getting the sugars. You stare <laughs> into the, the eyes of Sauron and you dive. What is this based off of again? Oh God, it's what's, so dense, Nicole. Oh my God. It's stuck. The cookie has stuck to the cutter because of just the sheer gravity of it. Uh, so this is based off a Hostess cupcake Thank with you, the marshmallow the frosting. Thank you. I do not enjoy chocolate cookies either. This Holy is going to be the fudgiest sh- thing we've ever eaten. What? Can you even describe the texture of this? Sand. Wet it's sand. Like, it's like kinetic sand. Yeah, it's, like it's, wet it's literally wet sand. sand. Excuse me. Oh I'm a lady. <laughs> Are you ready? Did you uh, eat it already? Okay. What the hell? Oh my God. What the hell's going on? So sugary. I hate this. I hate that. I hate this so much. I also hate hostess cupcakes. This makes me hate my life. Ew. Ruined my day. Worst thing to end on. My whole day is ruined. Do you realize how many Diet Cokes I'm going to need to drink to make up for this? <laughs> Ew. Six. Six Diet Cokes. It is, it is so, so, so dense with pure cocoa powder. Oh my God. It tastes... The, the most... Ugh. The most egregious thing on this, though, mm-hmm. is it's a whipped cream. They called it a whipped cream marshmallow frosting, but it's it's just pure whipped cream. Yeah. And it's it's super over whipped. Is it whipped cream? So it's super, super fatty, and it dissolves in your mouth. If this was a proper, like, yeah. marshmallow cream, that would do better because it doesn't have such a soft texture. So you're going from the literally the densest, densest cookie you've ever had with the lightest whipped cream that evaporates in your mouth, and then you're just left. Left, yeah. With dense chocolate. Um I have never had such terrible experiences and such beautiful euphoric experiences in, in one box. Yeah. I think they say life is like a box of chocolates, but mm-hmm. I think life is like a box of crumble cookies because it's going to give you your highest highs and your lowest lows. And that's what I, I would rather have that, though. Yeah. Right? I understand what you're saying. I know cookies are like a comfort food and people... Well, my laptop is covered in that's crumbs. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I know cookies are a comfort food and people tend to look for consistency in comfort foods, right? Not this guy. Mm-mm. I would rather ride the sine curve of life, Nicole, to its highest highs with and lowest lows. With cookies, though? With cookies, with everything. I want to cry. I want to laugh. I want to be hurt. I want to, you know, with feel cookies, safe. With cookies, though? Yes. No Cookies way. are a microcosm for life, Nicole. I don't think cookies should be like this. I need a bite of something else to I wash think, out. I think cookies like this should, I think the government <clears throat> needs to step in <laughs> because this is crazy. This is insanity. This is excessive. This is, dare I say, this is a little bit overrated. Dare I say. You're saying it's overrated. I think it's a little bit overrated. But let me tell you, there's so many other companies that do the same exact thing. There's Dirty Dough. There's Last Crumb. I've had all those. I've there's, had all those. There's, there's Crave. You don't think any of them hold a candle to crumble? No, not Why? at all. This is the sh- the level of shock and awe in crumble cookies. I am dead serious. I've had all the other ones. And There's those the are one all that's delicious. like pregnant and fat, and they're all like you know shrink wrapped <laughs> and whatnot. Um, I don't enjoy them. Uh, all of them taste the same. They're all kind of similar: giant, bloated, oversweet. But none of them literally have the shock and awe and the pomp and the circumstance. Do you know the halftime performer Red Panda? Absolutely not. Red Panda. So she goes on a giant unicycle and she balances plates. She throws them on top of her head. There's a lot of people who can do it. There's a lot of people who balance on stuff. They throw stuff. Not a single person does it nearly as well as Red Panda. They're talking about potentially inducting her into the NBA Hall of Fame because she's done so many halftime shows and nobody can hold a candle to her. This is the Red Panda of cookies. Crumble cookies are not overrated. They will give you the ride of your freaking lifetime if you can just hold on long enough and not let go, baby. I prefer insomnia. Find all the best cookies you can buy at the grocery store over at Spork. You guys want some cookies? Next time you're lost in the cookie aisle, search cookies on spork.com to find the best of the best. (laughs) All right, Nicole. 
We've heard you and I to say it. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions are, are Like Casseroles. Casserole. God, I don't feel good. Uh, 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 <laughs> my body's been sent into like a shock. Josh, my left toe is tingling and I can't stop you it. I gotta take it. I gotta take the toe. <laughs> I gotta cut it off. I save it in a jar in case I can reattach it. Uh, let's get into our first opinions, right? As I'm just trying to stop shaking. Hey, Josh and Nicole. Um, calling from Rochester, New York. Just talking walking about around plates? and it's talking very snowy and my nose is running. But I'm originally from San Diego. Diego. Um, so shout out to the Carnese Hada Burritos and Cali Bees out there. Let's go. Uh, I know you're a big fan of them, Josh. Hell yeah. But anyway, I like them too. <laughs> what my controversial food opinion is, I don't think there is anything wrong with microwaving leftover fast food. I always get shade. I agree with that. And just insulted by my friends and you by my partner it. whenever they see me microwave Three to four day old McDonald's. There's nothing wrong oh, with that. Correct. It's still food. Oh. Is it still just as good as when it's fresh? No. Obviously, fast food is better when you're eating it right away. But there's also nothing wrong with microwaving leftover fast food. It still is food. Thank you. Hope to be featured. Yeah. Um, I kind of only heard bits and pieces of that because I'm kind of blacking out right now. This man's moved from San Diego to Rochester, New York, the two opposite cities in America. Are they the most opposite? I mean, like, Rochester is, like, cold and desolate. San Diego is, like, happy and happy warm. Happy and sunny. Yeah. Um, I agree that when you microwave fast food, it is not as good as the original, but it doesn't no become worse. It. it becomes different. For instance, microwave lettuce. Nicole, are you familiar with a fancy Italian restaurant in Los Angeles called Alimento? Sure. Alimento with Gruner Vettliner on tap from a large steel drum, and they have radiatore pasta. They have a dish. I've been there twice. They have a dish called bruschetta with braised lettuces. Nicole, they cook their lettuces till they are hot. I never and had it. It is delightful, and they put it on bruschetta. I would eat it. You microwave a McChicken with the lettuce and mayonnaise. Oh, You're just braising it in the microwave. Josh, That's all I'm saying. No. Josh, no. Three, four days after you get it, no, just throw There's, it away, bro. They're chock full of preservatives. Okay, yeah, I agree, but it's like. It's gonna be fine. Just, just, there's no point. In, it's not like meal prepping. You ever microwave a Crunchwrap Supreme a couple no, days out? No, no. So I've mic- never done that. You microwave a Crunchwrap Supreme. One, the crunch, the layer just completely absorbs into the rest of it. Totally. The lettuce, the moisture from the lettuce takes the crunch wrap. It takes the tostada into itself like a starfish eating and it just becomes a soup inside, which is still good. It's like a gigantic soup dumpling. I'm with this man. I wouldn't do that anymore. Also, shout Sorry. out to Jenna Marbles and Babish. Who are both from Rochester. Correct. And Mario Lopez from San Diego. <laughs> Chula Vista specifically. Hi. My name is Anna. Uh, I'm from Burke, Virginia. And my hot take is that I cannot stand raw onion. Oh. Whether it's chopped, you know, chopped up green onion chives. A lot of times I'll have to ask for it not to be put on my food as a garnish because restaurants love to never list it on the menu and sneak it on there like, oh, hey, it's nothing. But no, it's not nothing. It's raw onion and makes everything taste like it. Mm -hmm. So love your show and thanks for listening. Bye. Okay. I I think raw onion is a beautiful flavor and I'm a big fan of it. I like red. I like white. Don't do yellow onions. Mm. Yellow onions are bad raw. Too punji. Green onions, delicious. Red onions can have a lot of bite and a lot of funk to yeah. them. Yeah, Josh sometimes makes me put it in ice water before I feed our guests. On My last favorite meals. thing to do. My favorite thing to do. And I know Scott Conant on Chopped is a big proponent of that as well, and I understand it. But uh, I just think raw onion is a beautiful flavor. I agree. But you're allowed to have like your preferences when it comes to like not having raw onion on stuff. I recommend maybe you start out with pickled. Pickled onions are a great way to introduce yourself into yeah. onionhood. Start with pickled onions, and then and then eventually, just like half of like your burrito or like half of your taco, do half pickled onions, half raw onions, and maybe you'll you don't know, maybe you'll love it at that point. I think not liking raw onion is a very reasonable thing to not like. Totally, yeah, like I think when, it's reasonable. When people are like, I hate mayonnaise. It's like, well, I mean, mayonnaise is it's really just a, a texture and a, a flavor of salt and acid that people like generally love. Yeah. But yeah, like the bite of raw onion can be really, really abrasive, really, really obtrusive. Totally. 
in a way that I genuinely love. Um, but yeah, the trick, the soaking it in in uh, ice, ice water, water is a trick I learned from Connie Seafood, my favorite Marisco's place. Because they had just these thick cut red onion rings. And every time I bit into it, it just exploded with like onion sweetness. And it was incredible. But no bite? No bite. And I was like, how do y'all do this? And like you soak it in ice water like overnight. So cool. And so I started doing that when I want a, like a big raw onion wedge, mm -hmm. you know, to have that big old texture. And to me, that's really great. But totally agree. Very reasonable dislike. Totally reasonable. But just try try liking it by by doing some fun things like what I said. Couldn't imagine like tacos without raw onion. Like it's that's delicious. you know yeah. street tacos without raw onion is is crazy. But hey, Josh and Nicole, this is Graham from Austin, Texas. Uh, saw you guys at Nikon. It was a hey. great show. Thanks, uh, Josh. More of a, a gym bro centric question. I'm Josh, I really want to know bro. your thoughts I can on be. the pocket egg. Is this dumb? Is it? I know what overrated. Is. is it underrated? Or are the gym bros on to something? like carrying a whole food around as a snack. I'd love your thoughts on that. May I? <laughs> uh, please take the pocket egg. I believe pocket egg is an egg you keep in your pocket for a protein boost. Is that correct? <laughs> that is that is correct. Um, okay. My only problem with the pocket egg, one, I'm a fan of pocket foods in the gym. I'll keep a protein bar, okay, which cool. having a whole food is probably better than a protein bar. Sure. But a thing that I believe in, I'm doing like two and a half hour workouts in the gym, right? And it's not all lifting. If you're if you're lifting for two and a half hours, it's overkill. But I'm stretching. I'm doing cardio. I'm doing rehab, prehab. I'm chatting a lot to all my homies. You know what I mean? So I'm there for a while. And if you get tired in the middle of your workout, you generally want what are called intra-workout carbs. Okay. Because you get a little bit of that blood sugar spike, you know, it makes your muscles feel more full. You could push out a couple extra reps. Intra workout protein to me doesn't really do much. To me, it's strictly a carb thing. So that's my only pocket food is a little bar. Pocket egg is probably a great way if you are going low carb. If you want to get, because eggs have what, 70 calories, six to seven grams of protein, like four or five grams of fat. Mm -hmm. To me, that doesn't suit my nutritional needs. Whenever I eat protein, I, again, if you get protein wherever you can, but when I'm eating protein, I'm eating five different 40 gram of protein feedings per day. So I have five meals at 40 grams of protein. I'm not religious about it, but I'm like, sometimes I'm like, what is eating six grams of protein going to do for me right now? Got it. Because I can eat six ounces of chicken breast and get like 40 grams, you know, or just stuff Oscar Mayer lunch meat in my face and get 40 grams but you versus wouldn't a keep six it in gram your of protein pocket, egg. But you wouldn't keep that in your pocket. No, but I do stash it around. I mean, you see what I do at work. I just order like rotisserie chickens and just keep them in fridges, you know? So yeah. I, I understand the need for a pocket egg. I would rather just go protein bar because I'm not low carb. And But doesn't the gym smell like eggs? Yeah, are people eating these eggs in the gym? I've seen videos of people doing it as like a gag, but like, like nobody's actually doing that, right? But going outside and eating it and coming in, that's fine. Oh, I don't, super fine. I don't want the gym to smell like hard-boiled eggs. Well, when I was, so I, I've told the story before, but when I was really uh, dirty bulking, which mm -hmm. is a term for eating as much as possible, as often as possible to get as fat and strong as possible, mm -hmm. And it really served me. I got my bench press up 100 pounds. I got a D1 scholarship and shot put. That's incredible. And the way that I would do it is Carl's Jr. always had a two for three dollar burger special back in the day. <laughs> now it's uh -huh. like two for five. Thanks, Joe Biden on inflation. <laughs> um, but they, back then it was called the Big Carl. Mm -hmm. And it was like 56 grams of protein, like a thousand plus calories wow. per burger. It was their take on a Big Mac. And I used to buy two. I'd eat one before the gym. And then I would eat one immediately after the gym to get in that... Uh, anabolic window, they call it, which is probably a myth, but whatever. But I'm I would not yachty because I'm bored. I'm I would just tired. <laughs> I'd eat a freaking sweaty two hour old hamburger in the sauna um, because I wanted to be funny. And Ew, I thought it was bro. a funny bit, and people laughed at me, and then some people were disgusted, and it smelled bad. But so people do weird stuff. People I dry scoop their protein. Can I tell you something? If I was in the sauna and I saw someone <laughs> eating a big coral, I mm. would tell the management to stop doing that. But like a 280 pound 17 year old? <laughs> You'd yeah. be like, get yeah. out of here? Yeah, I'd be like, hey, I no, I wouldn't say get out of here. I would go get the manager and say, get the heck out of here. Smelly. I never got in trouble. I only got in trouble for accidentally dropping metal plates on a concrete floor and oh, cracking Oh, you should it. never do that. Oh, I shattered to, the window once. You need to drop it down nicely and slowly. You can't just go, ah! Yeah, but if you have bumper plates, you can do it with bumper plates. They're meant to be dropped. Bumper plates are bumper meant plates to be dropped? Bumper plates and Olympic platforms are meant to be dropped. Okay, an Olympic platform's not at the freaking uh, They have it Planet at 24 Fitness. sometimes. They have it at 24 sometimes. Planet Fitness, no. Don't go to Planet Fitness if you're trying to lift. They do. Planet Fitness has a great business model. It's because 99% of their customers simply do not show up. It's for money. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're doing well. But it's for monies. Pocket egg is good. Just do, do pocket meat instead. Beef jerky. Good luck. Just do pocket jerky. It's Good better. luck. Better macros. Your two favorite gym bros are giving you the best advice. <laughs> <laughs>
I feel I I feel like swole. I feel from, vascular from the freaking cookies, dude. I'm like I feel swollen like from a, the cookies. Feel like a freaking good pump from the cookies, man. If you if you God. were to grab my my uh, leg, like what's this part of my leg? Which the, I don't the know bottom part, touching. the bottom part of my the leg. Calf, the if you were to grab my calf right now, I think an imprint would stay. The gastroc, the nemius, the tibialis. Which one? Just Maggie, next opinion. <laughs> Hey, you sexy beasts. This isn't really an opinion cast at all. I just wanted to call and let you know, you know how Instagram shows you like, you know, <laughs> so-and-so friend like this photo. Well, Instagram decided that me and Nicole are best friends because pretty much every time I pull up a meme that I'm going to send to my partner, I see that Nicole liked it. And I feel like I'm learning a lot about her just from seeing the Instagram posts that she likes. <laughs> so I don't know what you want to do with that information, but I just thought you'd want to know. Thanks for the kick-ass podcast. Love you. Bye. I love you. Uh, send them to me. Don't send them to your partner. Send them to me. I have a quick concern. What? People can see the posts you like on Instagram. Yes. All the time. Uh, can I just say something? Wait, I we, love, all knew, wait we all knew this? Wait, wait, side note, side note, side note. Sorry, I touched you. Side note. I love Instagram Reels. I don't have TikTok on my phone. I'm on Instagram Reels, and uh. I like Almost everything that I cut pops up on my explore page. But now it's curated right now. Like right now, if I go on my phone, it's going to be kitty cat mm. videos and, and funny foreign men. <laughs> but is there like a setting where people can't see the, the nope. things you've liked? Just don't like them. It's just out there. Huh? Just don't like them. Well, I want to like them. For, just save them. Oh, smart. You okay. can start saving them. Oh, here we go. Yeah. But yeah, That's thanks. I, I think I have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Connor from Spokane, and I just wanted to say that if you uh, is he gonna yell at me? we have one cheese as a pantry staple, I think cream cheese is just the best option. Ah, First interesting. Style, you can use it for every single meal, and it no. just makes every single thing you put on better. Cheddar is good, but it's a little too powerful for uh, most applications unless you really want that cheesiness. But cream cheese can go on just about everything. All right, love your show. Bye. I, I kind of love this. I have my qualms. What are your qualms? Um, so whenever I first started working here, one of the first Willits I worked on was Willet Mac and Cheese on the YouTube show that Josh and I work on, Good Mythical Morning. <sighs> and um, he was like, and I said, oh, yeah, let's put some cool cheeses in there. He's like, just put cream cheese. And I'm like, cream cheese? He's like, yeah, cream cheese is a cheese. And I'm like, mm -hmm. is it? And like you're talking I, about for the dessert ones. For, for, for a lot of them. Like you just, you say cream cheese is a default cheese. But it's not. I remember at differently. All. I remember differently. Of course you do. But cream cheese. You always remember <laughs> things differently. <laughs> no, well, I specifically said for like the dessert ones, we made a Kit, Kit, Kit Kat mac and cheese. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, and I was like, well, cream cheese is a cheese and it is. It's like not you said, a cheese. What? It's not a cheese. It's a cheese, dude. I don't well, think it's a I don't. I think that's why. We need new terms for cheeses. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like a Parmesan and mascarpone are or so different. What's the skier? Yeah, like skier is basically yogurt, but totally. it's classified as a cheese. Quark. I think quark. Nuf is that Neufchatel. Neufchatel, cream, mascarpone, even like ricotta. Those should just not be called cheeses. But what anymore. about like brie, boursin, camembert? Like those, those are all are, spreadable. Okay, yeah, but they're but they're uh, they're in a rind. They have a rind and they're aged. A poise. Rind. A poise. Rind. I, aged. Stinky. Yeah. I I do it, it but one cheese, right? You can make a you can make a, a, a cake frosting with cream cheese. You can't make it with cheddar. Yeah, you can. You can spread it on a you, you could do anything. No, you couldn't you make could it. With do cheddar. Anything well, you could make it with cheddar. You could do anything in this life. What would you, what would you do? You'd have to make a bechamel and then just add a bunch of powdered sugar to it and see if you yeah. make a cheddar frosting? Yeah, yeah. I guess that would work. Yeah, like, cheddar frosting on like an apple on an know. apple crumble cookie? Oh my God! We just invented the next crumble cookie, folks. This is how the creative process. Crumble happens. cookies, call us. We will help you. Josh and I, Josh and I, yep. will help you make your next batch of four flavors. They will all be weird, but they will all be delicious, and they won't be too Mormon sweet. The Mormon, the Mormons, and the Jews have always been like this. Shalom aleichem, malachem shalom, kadosh. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note thank y'all so much for stopping by a hot dog is the sandwich we got new audio only episodes out on Wednesdays video comes out on Fridays if you want to be featured on opinions or like casseroles you can hit us up at 833dogpod1 the number again is 833dogpod1 I'm gonna start doing the podcast from down here I like this and if I'll, you wanna check I'll meet ya 
I'm so sorry, Becky. Oh, I'm messed up. I'm down here uh, now. Oh, messed up. <laughs> uh, For more wanna... Mythical Kitchen, check us out yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. We launch new videos every week. We'll yeah. see you next time, Josh. I'm going to vomit. <laughs>